Hi, Boomer fans. Welcome to this week's edition of Coaches Corner, proudly brought to you by Lucerne Investment Partners and Econ Financial. This week's guest is coming to us during an exciting WNBA finals campaign. The Boomers have been very lucky to have her for the last two WNBL seasons where she has made an enormous impact on the league. And although she is unfortunately not able to join us for this upcoming season, we're all hoping to see her look back with the Boomers again in the very near future. Welcome, Lindsay Allen. Hi, LA. How are you? I'm pretty good, Riz. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's so good to have you and it's a to <laughs> talk to you through the WBA finals. For WBL who are looking like we're about to go into the hub, how have you found the whole experience over there playing this way? Um, well, it's obviously a completely new and different experience. Um, I think coming in, we were all just a bit sort of hesitant just with how things were going to work with practice, trainings, kind of any one-on-one trainings you might want to have, um, all sorts of stuff, testing and all that stuff in regards to COVID. I think as players, we kind of knew what to expect coming in, but um, yeah, we've enjoyed our experience, but I think it's been a little tough at times just being in a bubble, but um, we're grateful to be together as a team and to be together as a league. So are you, I know when we spoke to Ash, she's got two teammates with her, two housemates, sorry. Um, Do you have a housemate? Are you able to live on your own? What's your setup? Yeah, so I'm rooming with Asia Wilson, and it's just kind of like a, it's called the Lodges, but it's just like a regular apartment with um, two bedrooms. In hindsight, now that you've been through it, what would you suggest to all the WNBL girls about to go through this? What's some, what's some tips you can give them? I think definitely find an outlet for things you want to do outside of basketball, because when you're here in, in the bubble, you really can't escape it. You know, you see different teams everywhere, different coaches, players, even the referees, you see them around campus and all that stuff. So it's really hard to escape the league and the WNBA and basketball, but I think it's good to have a chance to just sort of unplug and get away from basketball, get away from thinking about the sport. For me, it's been just kind of hanging out with Asia. Um, We'll watch random shows and all that stuff. And then um, reading and journaling a little bit, um, talking to family and friends from back home. You've had a fantastic season only losing the four games for the season. Now, it's funny because Connecticut came in, I think, 10 and 12, and you guys were very clearly first. But yeah. Connecticut seemed to be coming in with some really good momentum. So, unfortunately, you dropped game one. What was the mm-hmm. my, what was the conversation after game one going into game two, which is tomorrow? I think a little bit of it was just we were a little rusty. Um, we hadn't played in a week before game one so and Connecticut had played two games already up to that point and so coming in we knew we were going to be a little bit rusty just because we haven't played in a while we were so used to playing every other day we had to take it to a completely different level because it's playoffs time Um, you know teams are going to be more passionate they're going to be really going for it and so we realized that you know we couldn't just sort of think it's fine to drop one game and think that you know um, we'll be okay and so uh, we started off game one and didn't reset the tone that we wanted to. And it's unfortunate just considering it's game one of the series. But thankfully, it's a five-game series. And so I think we're going to turn it around from here. You had such a phenomenal two seasons with the Boomers. And unfortunately, you've had to manage a pretty annoying and ongoing knee injury. So how are you personally yeah. feeling this season? Yeah, I think um, I'm managing myself pretty well. I think we have a great support staff here in terms uh, of just kind of making sure that we're staying on top of things and that anytime we have any sort of injuries, bumps, bruises, little things like that, that we get uh, those tended to right away so that they don't turn into something more. As someone that's gotten to know Izzy so well over the last two seasons and you've been on your own wonderful WBA journey, how fantastic is it for you personally to see Izzy making such a great impact on her debut season? Oh yeah, it's been so great to see. Um, Just because, you know, I was chatting with Ezzy a lot when I was back in uh, Melbourne just about the WNBA and whether she was going to go, whether she thought she was ready. Um, And just to be able to go from those chats to now um, where she's playing incredibly well and she's really fitting into their team very well. And, um, you know, the team kind of relies on her in that role to just kind of fill out that role. And I think she's doing really, really well. I think Seattle was such a great fit for her in terms of just the club and her teammates and the coaches. Um, and yeah, I think she's just been exceeding incredibly. Tell us your personal journey getting to the WNBA and then the WNBL. Yeah, um, so for me, it started um, in college. So going to Notre Dame for four years. And I think I knew pretty early on that the WNBA and playing overseas and all that stuff is where I wanted to get to. Just trying to picture myself at that level and um, learn more about 
just the league in general was good for me. And then I got drafted senior year and so went off to New York for my rookie training camp. Um, ended up getting waived at the end of training camp, but then I was brought back. Uh, I was off to Russia um, in September of that year. And so really experiencing something new and something different and it's a completely different world. But I was lucky to have another American teammate who was my age as well. And so we got along great. And I was, we were able to just sort of lean on each other throughout that season and throughout that winter. And then in sort of February of that next year, my agent mentioned Australia to me and mentioned um, possibly playing in this league and that a team was interested. And so I knew I wanted to play in Australia at some point in my basketball career. Thankfully, it happened sooner rather than later. And I had a perfect fit with the Boomers and everything just sort of worked out from there and spent two years in the WNBL with the Boomers and uh, grew a lot as a player and a lot as a person. And I think it's helped me up to this point on uh, my third season in WNBA. Which leads us into we're all so disappointed that we can't have you with us this season. It's obviously going to be a yeah. very new look for the WNBL. Um, what will you be doing over the next few months instead of the WNBL season? Do you know yet? Yeah, um, so I've signed to play in Russia again. Um, and so that will probably start maybe mid-October, just depending on when we get done here and when I get uh, my Russian visa. But yeah, headed off to Russia and Brianna Turner is actually going to be my teammate over there. So that'll be exciting. Let's kind of reflect a little bit on your last two seasons, because um, obviously every Boomer fan absolutely adores you. Your teammates, your club all adores you. And we're going to really miss not having you with us this season. Reflecting back over the last two years, how did you find your time in the WNBL personally? Oh, um, yeah, I loved it personally. Um, I think it was a really good fit for me. And I think I improved um, both professionally as a basketball player, but also I was able to see the world. I was able to meet new people. And so experiencing those two years um, in the league, it was fantastic. Do you feel like it's really helped your game leading back into the WNBA and to really try and further your career? Yeah, I think so. And I think I give a lot of credit to Guy and to you and Flinny for sure, because I was able to work on my game individually. And you guys really stressed that, you know, trying to be a better player individually so that when we come together as a team, um, we're a better team and we're better skilled um, for it. Looking at your role with us in the WNBL, which is like you are, you're a go-to, you're on, um, you, you're very rarely sitting. How do you mentally then transfer back to probably for this season for you anyway, it's been mm -hmm. obviously still a major role with your WNBA team with the Aces, but it is different. So how do yeah. you adjust mentally to the, the two roles between each team? Yeah, I think for both, it's all about just trying to strive um, and be the best you can be in your role. And so with the Boomers, it was, you know, court a lot and facilitating the offense a lot and getting us, getting us into stuff. And I think with this team, it's more so just trying to fit into the role that um, Bill needs me to fit into. I know everyone on this team has a role. And if I don't do my role, then the team, you know, how we start the game is completely different than how we should. And so really just trying to focus on my role and making sure I'm doing that um, and then see how the game goes. Provided that you're able to be able to really just go for it over the next um, few years, what are your goals immediately over the next few months for you personally? My goals are just get better every day and just kind of strive for a continuous improvement. And I think just letting the game come to me and just continuing to improve and, you know, moving on to the next play because you can't really dwell on past mistakes much in this game. Looking back on your journey so far, what advice would you give yourself from beginning to now if you could obviously go back and revisit back in the earlier days? Enjoy it for sure. And then just don't take it for granted. I think growing up, you know, you play the sport for me through elementary school, through middle school, through high school. And I mean, the years fly by so quickly that you really don't have time to stay in the moment and just really enjoy it. And I think that's one of my regrets, not taking more time to just appreciate where I am. Nickname? Uh, just LA or Lens. Favourite saying or word? Probably just it is what it is. Because you know? <laughs> sometimes it just is what it is. Outside of basketball, what is your favourite thing to do? Either reading or watching um, the TV show on like Netflix, Hulu, HBO. Favourite book? I read this book a few years ago when I was in Russia. It was called um, Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour um, bookstore. And it was just kind of a random book I picked up because I like the cover, but it ended up being a really good book. Favorite playing number? 15. Where does that come from? 
Um, so growing up, I was playing for a team and, and this was around um, like 03, 04. And it was Carmelo Anthony's rookie year. And I just loved his game. I loved his style. I loved everything about him. And so, so he was 15 with the Denver Nuggets. And so I decided to be 15 and it just kind of stuck ever since. What did you study at Notre Dame? Um, management consulting. What do you want to be when you grow up? Like maybe learning a trade or maybe going back to school for a couple of years to be a nurse or something. Um, no. Yeah, I just have no idea. Favorite board game or card game? Oh, I love spades. Do you play any musical instruments? Yes. Um, growing up, my parents made all of us, me, my brother, my sister, take piano lessons. And then I played oboe for a little bit in high school and I'm, learning guitar a little bit right now, but I don't have it with me here in Florida. So I haven't played it since um, like mid-June, probably. If you could invite only one guest to dinner, who would it be and why? Coach Popovich, just because he's such a good coach and I've been a fan of the Spurs for a long time, just um, admiring their play and how they play and the system that they play with. Favorite food? I might say pizza right now. Your biggest pet peeve? Um, I hate when people like are walking with flip flops and they don't pick their feet up. So like the flip flop <laughs> just drags with every step. It's just kind of, <laughs> you hear it? It's just like, you try not to let it bother you too much, but it's just like, <laughs> pick your feet up just a little bit. Any other standout memories from the last boomer season? This past year when we went to um, Gippsland for like fire relief stuff and we were able to kind of ride on camels for a little bit. And just kind of seeing everyone's reaction to seeing a camel probably for the first time and just not really knowing how it's going to react to us and not really like having any sort of um, preparation to how you're going to face a camel uh, was pretty cool. See how um, chill they are and how calm they really are. I think that was pretty cool. LA, it's been so great chatting with you. Best of luck with the rest of the WNBA season. We're all cheering for you and hope that you come up against Ez in the grand final series. Best of luck in Russia. We're really going to miss you this upcoming WNBL season. From us to you, we all want to say we're going to miss you, but best of luck and hopefully we can see you back with the Boomers the following season. For sure. Thanks for having me, Russ. Well, that's another edition of Coach's Corner. Don't forget to follow the Boomers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube for all updated news. See you next week.